Good morning and welcome back. Layered frame designs. They're pretty cool. You see a lot of them online. A lot of folks are making them. A lot of folks sell different types of crafts or designs, whether it's for holiday ornaments, holiday gifts, gift giving, signs, posters, all kinds of different uses. The wonderful thing about them is they provide a 3D effect or depth to your design or to your art. You might think they're pretty hard to make, but in fact, using the bolt and light burn, it's pretty simple. Let's make one together today on Laser Nug. So in light burn, I've decided I'm going to do four different layers just for the sake of example and for repetition. So I know I need frames and they have to be the same size. So I'm going to grab my rectangle tool and I'm going to make a rectangle. Okay. I'm going to come back, hit my select tool. I'm going to make a five by seven frame. And of course you can do this as small, as big as you want, and you can do as many layers as you want, but let's just do four five by sevens. So I'm going to unlock my aspect ratio and I'm going to make it seven inches wide. Just put my glasses on and I'm going to make it five inches in height. I'm done. I'm going to lock my aspect ratio again, and I want to make sure I don't play with this size any further. I'm going to come over here to the left and I'm going to create an offset and I'm going to make the offset a quarter of an inch. That's my frame. Basically I've done it outward. I'm good. I'm going to click. Okay. I'm going to grab these two shapes and for now I'm going to group them together. And now what I want to do is duplicate them. So I'm going to right click duplicate. Now I have two frames or grab them both, right click, duplicate again. And now I have four frames. So these are my frames, which are going to be glued together one on top of the other, but now I need pictures to insert in them. So for now, I'm just going to grab this guy, move it over here for now, and let's import the pictures I chose. And these are pretty simple silhouette pictures. I, you know, you buy them for a buck off the internet somewhere. They're not, they're not really fancy, but for this type of thing, unless you want really detailed engraved pieces, you're probably going to at least practice with silhouettes. When you're buying some of these files, you'll find that they're not very well made. So it's best to import them one at a time because quite often they're not grouped, which means if you try to pull them away afterwards, this one's grouped. So we're fine. Put them over here but some of them you'll find are not grouped. So you need to group them before you move them. See that guy's not grouped, but hopefully I got them all. Let me check. I did now. There's my dolphin and my fourth picture, which will be a boat. Okay. Let me just make sure I've got him grouped. Uh, see, not grouped, but he's grouped now. Good. We're going to put this guy here and let's do our tree first. I'm going to grab my tree. And the key here is, and I'm just going to blow this up for you, is you want to make sure that parts of each design touches the inside border because you're going to weld those together. So I've got a nice, and they need to overlap a little bit. In fact, I'll move it over a little more. So I have it touching along this vertical part of the frame and on the bottom. Good. So now I need to weld them together. First thing I need to do is ungroup this frame. I'm going to highlight the inside of the frame, press shift. I'm going to highlight my palm trees. And I'm going to come up here to the top under tools and I'm going to choose my Boolean assistant. I'm still using that because I'm not hundred percent familiar with what each different icon does. And what the assistant allows me to do is to cursor over to make sure it's doing what I want it to do. And this is the one that subtract a minus B. If I click that and click okay, 
my tree has now become part of the border. This means when I go to engrave it or to cut it out, it's going to cut out as part of the inside border. I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to group this. Okay. And that's one frame. Let me move them out of the way for now. I'm going to grab my next frame. That's what my picture is going to look like when I'm done. So let's pull them apart. We're going to set these all to cut layers because I don't plan on engraving any of these parts. They're just silhouettes. Uh, we'll grab our palm tree first. I'm going to make that a red layer because I'm just cutting. Okay. And I'm going to come over here to the left or to the right side to my library. I'm going to find my craft plywood because that's what I'm using today. And you can use anything, MDF, uh, regular plywood, Baltic birch, craft plywood. I'm using my 1 8 today. And I'm going to cut that. And you'll see I usually use a 2 and a half inch lens for that. And I'm going to assign it. Quite often I'm using different pieces of plywood because I tend to keep my scraps or my leftovers. But I'm using a full sheet today. So that means I can cut everything at once. So I'm just going to grab all these guys, make them all cut layers, and I'm going to set them out where I want them on my piece of plywood. I think that should do it. All right, great. So let's group them all. Twelve minutes, forty-five seconds. And let's send it to the bolt. Because I'm not going to be painting this, I'm just doing it for an example. I'm going to mask it. I find, regardless of whether it's regular plywood, craft plywood, acrylic, just makes cleanup so much easier. Because all of the debris and the exhaust from the laser goes on the mask instead of on the piece itself. That way I don't have to sand it or clean it in any way afterwards. I just peel the mask off quick and easy. You just always want to make sure you get all the air bubbles out.
Now with our pieces cut, we can take the mask off and we can start gluing it together. So there's the finished product. I think it turned out pretty nice. A lot of other things you could have done with this. For example, we could have painted our parts and then combined it together. If we wanted further depth, we could have just made a couple of more five by seven frames, just the frame itself, and placed them in between the various different layers that had designs attached. Could use a little acrylic. For example, our beach scene, I could have used a light blue acrylic across the back, just cut out a five by seven piece and if I really wanted to get fancy, I could cut out some clear acrylic and close in the front. In fact, I could probably go to the backyard and I'd pour some sand in here and then close up the whole design. So we actually had a sandy beach at the bottom. Either way, there's a number of different things you can use these for and to do. And I hope today's video has been helpful, especially for you new beginners like myself. There's so much you can do in Lightburn and the bolt can do so many different things with so many different materials, very accurately, very precisely. There's just an endless number of things that you can design and make using that laser and the features that you have available in Lightburn. So hey, it's that time again. It's a wrap. I hope you found today's video helpful. If you haven't tried it yet, I'd urge you to give it a shot. Perhaps make a couple of them, just with even out of some scraps that you might have off of some of your materials. It gives you an opportunity to practice and get more experience using yet another feature in Lightburn. That's gonna be very helpful. Have a great week. Please be kind to one another, and I'll see you again right here. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching Laser Nook. Cheers.